Hello everyone and welcome to another case on ECG. I am Dr. Vajesh Chibir. I have done residency in cardiology and currently working as a registrar. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. This is ECG from a 55 year old lady who presented with shortness of breath on exertion. Before starting the discussion, as always, take a moment to look at the ECG, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself. And at the end of the video, compare those findings and diagnosis with what was discussed in this video. So let's begin with the discussion. As you know, the first thing which we look at is rhythm. As you can see that there is a long lead called rhythm, rhythm strip at the base of the ECG, bottom of the ECG. As you can note that there are upright and prominent P waves before each QRS complex. So the presence of prominent upright P waves before QR, QRS complex suggests that this is our sinus rhythm. Next is heart rate. For heart rate, we select a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line like this QRS complex. And for the calculation of heart rate, we will count down the large boxes between this QRS complex and next QRS complex as 300, 150, 100, and 75. So the heart rate in this case is about 75 beats per minute. Next step on ECG interpretation is determination of axis. For axis, as you know, we we'll look at the direction of QRS complex in lead 1 and lead ABA. Here in this case, both in lead 1 and lead ABA, the QRS complex is directed upwards. So axis in this case is normal. Now next there is an important finding, especially in lead 2 and lead V1. If you look at the duration of P wave in lead 2, you can note that the duration of P wave in lead 2 is more than 2.5 small scales. Similarly, the P wave in lead V1 is biphasic with a negative terminal end which is about one small scale wide and one small scale deep. The presence of a P wave which is more than 2.5 small scale in lead 2 with a broad negative terminal end in, in, end in lead V1 means that there is left atrial enlargement. Also you can note that in lead V1 there is prominent R wave. Normally the R wave is not prominent in lead V1 but there are few conditions in which the R wave in lead V1 is prominent. Firstly there could be an R wave in lead V1 in normal variant. In right ventricular hypertrophy R wave could be present in lead V1 in case of posterior wall MI, in case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and Duchenne cardiomyopathy. So in this setting, the presence of an R wave along with left atrial enlargement in a woman who presents with shortness of breath point towards the diagnosis of mitral stenosis. Other thing which we should look at on ECG before concluding is the PR interval and QT interval. As you can see that the PR interval is within normal limits. Similarly, the QT interval is not prolonged in this case. 
so to sum up the findings there is a sinus rhythm with normal axis and left atrial enlargement and right ventricular hypertrophy with most probably underlying mitral stenosis as the diagnosis so this is all for today hopefully you like the video for more videos kindly subscribe to this channel and stay tuned thank you and allah hafiz till next time